Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Prince of Peace. Today is the fourth Tuesday of Easter. Deacon Tom Martin is assisting. Stephen Frizzell will be our lector today. Our opening song is God Has Chosen Me. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching in life. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. God is calling me, God is calling me, in all whose cry is unheard. God is calling me, God is calling me, to raise up the voice with no power or choice. God is calling me, calling me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin this celebration, let us be mindful of God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, our brother and our guide, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, our way and our truth, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, our life and our hope, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that celebrating the mysteries of the holy resurrection, of the Lord's resurrection, we may merit to receive the joys of our redemption through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity to the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us listen to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, All you nations, praise the Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves, the gates of Zion more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All All you nations, praise praise the Lord. I tell of Egypt and Babylon, among those who know the Lord, of Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia, This man was born there, and of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. All All you nations, nations, praise praise the Lord. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, This man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance. My home is within you. All All you nations, nations, praise praise the Lord. Lord. 
blessing, Father. May the Lord be on your mind on this. We pray in the gospel. Amen. Alleluia. 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 My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome this beautiful spring day, my brothers and sisters. And the first reading we hear of the word of God being spread to the Greek world and the first time that the Christians were known to be Christians as they spread this word. In today's gospel, uh, the Jews gathered around Christ and they asked him, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? Imagine if Christ would have looked at them and said, how long are you going to keep me in suspense? That would be today you would know perhaps that he were talking about. And this, with the coronavirus, is a great time of suspense. As we're all sheltered away in our own little upper rooms or versions of seclusion that we're living in now, going about just to uh, satisfy our basic needs of food and things. But the suspense always adds mystery to the novel. Without the suspense, there is no story, and we are people of the book and people of the word. And this suspense, when will the coronavirus leave us? Well, the coronavirus, I was doing a little research, is not a living thing that you can kill. It uh, floats around microscopic protein, as it were, that's on this fat cell or something of this nature I was reading. And what it does is it lands within you and it hijacks your DNA and disrupts your own system with the autoimmunes, the things meant to fight it. So it manifests itself in different ways in different people. Some people have it and no symptoms whatsoever. So how are we going to get rid of this virus? Well, it's never going to get rid of it. It's not going to go away and mutate into non-existence or whatever it does. It doesn't exist. But the great fear is one day we have to step out into the world regardless of viruses. A virus can't hijack us. I love the language when I was reading it. A virus doesn't have a will. Now, on the other hand, what does have a will is something we can hijack. We could hijack what Christ wants us to do and come up with our own version of what we should do. The great fear nowadays, my brothers and sisters, is death. Well, if we look closely, more people in this country die from abortions every day than they die from coronavirus. And there's not a great outcry about that because this is suspenseful. This is something that came against us that doesn't have a will. And unless we can help, be helped by it, and God bless, science will save us in the sense they'll come up with a vaccine. The sooner the better, we hope. But it's the vaccine. But what's an act of our will is what we can hijack, what we are meant to be as Christians. Now that we are shut out of our churches, is a very hard time. And one day we'll have to step back into the world regardless of the coronavirus and hopefully it subsides. But saints are not made by staying home. But it's a wonderful uh, time as we're tested in our faith and run into death, which is, uh, is part of the story and the tension. And for those who hear his voice, uh, death, I remember praying as a kid and I've changed the prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. 
I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And I said that once for one of my uh, grandchildren and my, uh, one of my children said, oh, we don't say that prayer anymore. It's too negative. And they changed the ending of it. Uh, if I should die, uh, my soul to take. Well, that was my childhood prayer. And it's, uh, that's the modern world, though. In the face of death, we, we simply are just nervous wrecks is what we become. But as Christians, when we went out and took the good word, as you see in the first reading, and after those had to be scattered that were persecuted, after Stephen, they fled to the Greek world. And they went to Antioch. And some of the faithful who heard them were quickly added as they went. And these were the first people they remained faithful to the firmness of heart to Christ and the word that he took. Because Christ did not come to uh, let us be hijacked. He came to rescue us from sin and death. And that is important in this times to keep sin and death before us because one thing, death is not of our will but sin is an act of our will and we're called back to be Christians and to hold on to him because we hear his voice we are the sheep that hear his voice and it's not the case that you've heard his voice once there I've got it down I've finished that program off but we must continually hear his voice by reading the scripture and uh, further when I was looking into the cell it was interesting it said the cell in the language they used a cell needs a host to feed off of. It needs a host to feed off of. A cell does. This microscopic coronavirus needs a host. Well, that's nice. We also need a host, but it's the host of the Eucharist that has us walking through death with Christ. And that's what we're called to do, my brothers and sisters. We must always keep this before our mind that the coronavirus should not scare the hell out of us, but prepare to get the hell out of us, as it were, and Christ looked at us, and he would say to those Jews that looked at him, why do you keep us in suspense? And Christ would look at us and say, why do you keep me in suspense? Come home to me, my sheep, and fear death no longer. And now let us turn to God with our prayers of intercession. Knowing our heavenly God desires to aid us in our journey, we turn now with these special prayers. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our holy shepherd in the church, that they may be a light to the nations and an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. For national and civic leaders, that they may heed the witness of Christian prophets and apostles, uphold the dignity of human life and justice due to all the children of the Heavenly Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in a period of great distress, suffering from illness or poverty, that the blood of the Lamb offered in this Mass may strengthen and console them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel alone and depressed because of the isolation of this time and their brothers and sisters may be moved to relieve their sadness by reaching out to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died as a result of this pandemic, that faith in Christ Jesus as the resurrection and life may lead them into eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of abiding love and mercy, we thank you for calling us to strength beyond our limitations and to live as witnesses to your risen Son. Help us to live as repentant, forgiving, loving members of Christ's body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the parishioners of Prince of Peace for whom this Mass was offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Generous God, you know us each by name. Hear our prayers and let your Holy Spirit fill our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever.
thank all who have been so generous to our church that we may continue the mission of your church. If you'd like to make an offering, you may do so on our webpage or by mailing it to the parish. Or if you make a visit to the church by the confessional, there is a drop box. God bless you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice, the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his, of his name, name, for our, our good, good and the good of all his, his holy, holy church. church. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always find a light in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of the light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising, and in his rising the life of all have risen. Therefore, overcome by paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them. Um, like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and in and willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. I'm going to be praying that partaking of the body and blood of Christ and may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring your church to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and the Martyrs, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and stay from all distress as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with the will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins of the world, world. have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof. roof. 
but only, only say, say the, the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you were, as if you were already there, and you might unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements as normal. Um, May is the traditional month where we uh, pray the rosary. I'm growing up In my household, we prayed it as a family, uh, led by my father, but we all took turns. There are guides given to us by the Knights of Columbus, the Prince of Peace Council, and the church, if you'd like to pick one up. We also continue to have the little white books. There's still some left. The Living Faith uh, booklets are still here, too. Uh, The bulletin you may find online, or you may pick it up at the church. Uh, Please be aware that we're hoping to open and have masses May 30th and 31st. There'll be certain guidelines and restrictions and so forth, and we're working on that now. Uh, Please pray for us as we work to a safe opening uh, for our parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We'll sing a couple of verses of Immaculate Mary. Well, first we'll do the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and every other evil spirit who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praise of we sing. You reign now in heaven with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven the blessed your glory proclaim. On earth we, your children, invoke your fair name. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. We pray for our mother, the church upon earth, and bless holy Mary, the land of our birth. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. 